Hello. One request. One night. Brian's life changed forever when his wife said she needed more. What happens next will have you on the edge of your seat. My wife Olivia wanted an open marriage, but I gave her a taste of reality that ended our relationship. Olivia, who's 32 years old, is a strikingly beautiful woman with wavy chestnut hair and captivating green eyes. She works as a second-grade teacher in an elementary school in Phoenix, Arizona. Recently, she told me she wanted to explore relationships outside of our marriage. She was very direct about it, and it wasn't hard for me to grasp the implications. I, Brian, a 48-year-old forensic accountant, have always prided myself on being a dependable provider. I dedicated myself to ensuring we were financially secure, making sure Olivia had everything she ever wanted. But this request came completely out of the blue. To soften the blow, I planned an elegant dinner at Cedar and Vine, a trendy, upscale restaurant in downtown Phoenix where we'd celebrated several anniversaries and special moments. I reserved the best table with view of the desert skyline. The white tablecloths were pristine, and the wine selection was exquisite. As a surprise, I bought Olivia a gold necklace she had admired for months, spending nearly $1,500 on it, money I'd soon regret spending. During dinner, I could sense something was off. Normally, we'd engage in animated conversation, but that evening, the atmosphere between us was heavy. Olivia seemed distant, her eyes occasionally drifting around the room as if searching for someone or something. Usually, when she looked at me, her gaze was warm and focused, but tonight it was scattered and uneasy. We had just finished the main course and ordered a second bottle of wine when she finally spoke. Brian, there's something I've been meaning to talk to you about for a while now. I think it's time. I paused, carefully setting down my wine glass. Her tone was serious, not like her usual light-hearted chatter. My thoughts started racing. Was she going to bring up starting a family? We discussed it before and decided to wait until we were more settled in our careers. Now we were. But the way she avoided eye contact told me this wasn't about children. She continued, her voice slightly trembling, I need to figure out who I am outside of us. I think it'll make me a better partner in the long run. I was stunned, my heart pounding in my chest. What are you saying? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady. I leaned in, hoping to catch her eyes, but she wouldn't look at me. I want to see other people, Brian. I want us to be open about this before we end up resenting each other down the road. Her words hit me like a freight train. The cozy, intimate ambience of cedar and vine suddenly felt suffocating. The quiet hum of the other diners blurred as the reality of her statement sunk in. This wasn't a casual request, it was the potential unraveling of everything we had built together. My mind was spinning as I tried to wrap my head around her words. You want to date other men, and you expect me to be okay with it? I asked, the frustration rising in my voice. Olivia, how can you think I would agree to this? She reached across the table, attempting to take my hand, but I pulled away. Brian, I love you. That hasn't changed. I just need to explore this part of myself. It's something I have to do. I promise, after a few months, I'll come back, and will be even stronger for it. Her words, meant to soothe me, hung in the air like an unspoken ultimatum. Could I really accept this? Could our marriage survive it? The thought churned in my gut, twisting my emotions into a knot. I knew that nothing between us would ever be the same again. I don't know if I can do this, Olivia. My voice was quieter now, disbelief replacing the initial surge of anger. You're asking me to stand by while you see other men. And then what? We just go back to normal like nothing happened. Brian, it's not like that, she said softly, her eyes pleading for me to understand. I'm not leaving you. I'm just asking for time to explore these feelings I've been having. I love you, and I still see us starting a family together in the future, but I need to figure out who I am first. Her sudden detachment, the way she avoided looking me in the eye, it all made sense now. She had already made up her mind long before this dinner. Without thinking, I stood up abruptly, tossing my napkin onto the table. I need to get out of here, I muttered, pushing my chair back as I turned toward the exit. Brian, where are you going? She called after me, but I didn't look back. You'll need to find your own way home, I said as I strode out of the restaurant and into the warm Phoenix night. 
The sounds of the city buzzed around me, but I barely noticed. I climbed into my car and drove, no destination in mind, just a need to escape. My thoughts swirled with anger, confusion, and an overwhelming sense of betrayal. The woman I had thought I knew was suddenly a stranger. I ended up parking outside of Redwood Diner, a quiet spot on the outskirts of Phoenix where I often went to clear my head. I ordered a black coffee and stared out the window at the passing cars, their headlights reflecting off the glass. Could I really live with Olivia seeing other men? Was this the end of our marriage, or was it some cruel test of my commitment? The more I thought about it, the more certain I became. This wasn't something I could accept. If Olivia needed to explore other relationships, she would have to do it without me. The next morning, I woke up in my car, my neck stiff from spending the night slumped over in the driver's seat. I stretched, groggy and disoriented, hoping the events of the previous evening were nothing more than a bad dream. But the series of missed calls and text messages from Olivia on my phone reminded me that it was all too real. She had been worried about where I'd gone, but I wasn't ready to face her. I drove to Peak Performance Gym, the place where I usually worked out, hoping a good workout would help me clear my mind. As I pounded away on the treadmill, my thoughts circled back to Olivia's words. This wasn't a passing issue, it was a betrayal. Something fundamental had shifted in her, and no matter how much she tried to sugarcoat it, I couldn't deny what this meant for our relationship. After finishing my workout, I hit the showers, then sat in my car in the gym parking lot, staring blankly at the steering wheel. How was I supposed to go back to our home and act like everything was fine? I knew I had to confront her, but I wasn't sure I was ready for the conversation that awaited me. After grabbing a quick breakfast at Redwood Diner again, I finally decided to head home. When I pulled into the driveway, Olivia was already at the door, waiting for me. Her face was a mixture of worry and regret. Brian, where were you all night? I was scared something happened, she said, reaching out to touch my arm as I brushed past her into the house. I need a shower, I muttered coldly. After that, we're going to talk. I walked into our bedroom, peeling off my gym clothes and stepping into the shower. The hot water poured over me, and for a brief moment, it was a welcome distraction from the mess my life had become. But as the steam filled the room, the question started bubbling to the surface again. How had it come to this? Was this really the end of everything Olivia and I had built together? When I emerged from the bathroom, feeling slightly more composed, I found her sitting at the kitchen island, her hands clasped nervously in front of her. I poured myself a cup of coffee, sat across from her, and finally asked the question that had been burning inside me all night. Explain to me again why you want to have relationships outside of our marriage, I said, my voice calm but laced with frustration. Olivia sighed, her fingers fiddling with the edge of her napkin. Brian, I told you. I feel like I've lost myself. I need to feel validated as a woman, and I don't know who I am outside of us. This is something I have to explore, and it's not because I don't love you. And you think the way to do that is by dating other men? I asked, the disbelief evident in my tone. Are you asking me to just step aside while you figure yourself out with other men? She shook her head, her voice trembling. No, Brian. I'm not leaving you. I want to stay here, in our home. I just need some freedom to do this while we're still together. I leaned back in my chair, letting out a bitter laugh. So, you want to have your cake and eat it too? You want to explore your needs while I just sit here and wait for you to decide if you still want me? Olivia's eyes dropped to her lap, her voice barely a whisper. It's not like that. I just need time. Time for what? I demanded, the frustration boiling over. Time to sleep with other men while I sit at home and stay loyal to you. How long do you expect me to wait for you to figure this out? I don't know, she admitted, her voice cracking. A few months, maybe longer. I just need to find what's missing in me. I took a long sip of my coffee, the bitterness searing my throat as I tried to process what she was saying. And what about us? Do you expect me to still be your husband while you're out exploring these new relationships? Of course, she replied quickly, her eyes wide with desperation. We're still a family, Brian. I love you, and I don't want to lose that. I just need to feel whole again, and this is the only way I know how. I shook my head in disbelief. How often are you planning to do this, Olivia? 
every weekend, a few times a week? What does my life look like while you're out on dates and, let's be honest, probably sleeping with these men? She shifted uncomfortably in her seat. I haven't figured that out yet, she admitted. Well, I need to know, I said firmly, my voice growing colder by the minute. Because if this is what you want, you're going to have to move out. I'm not living under the same roof with you while you're seeing other men. Her face fell in shock. Move out. Brian, where would I even go? That's for you to figure out. I shot back. Maybe you can stay with Jessica for a while. You spend enough time with her anyway, and she's been through this before. But you're not doing this while living here, and if you're serious about it, you're going to be responsible for your own expenses, rent, bills, everything. I'm not supporting you while you date other men. Olivia looked at me, her lips trembling slightly, as if she couldn't believe what I was saying. Maybe she thought I would be too passive, too compliant to stand up to her request. Olivia, I've made myself clear, I continued, leaning forward, my tone unyielding. If you want an open marriage, you can't stay here. You'll need to move out and make your own arrangements. For a moment, she didn't speak, her eyes wide as if she were testing how far she could push this. Then, slowly, she nodded. I'll stay with Jessica for a while, I guess, but I don't want this to be permanent. I still want us to work. I sighed, rubbing a hand over my face. Olivia, this isn't just about staying together. It's about what happens after you do this. I don't know if I'll ever be able to look at you the same way again. I'll come back, Brian, she insisted, her voice softening. And when I do, I'll be ready to start a family with you. I just need this time to find myself. Her words sounded hollow to me now, as if she truly believed that everything could somehow return to normal. But I knew better. Our relationship had been fractured in a way that wasn't easy to fix. And what am I supposed to do in the meantime? I asked, feeling the anger rise again. Sit here and wait for you to finish finding yourself. Do you expect me to just remain faithful while you're out with other men? Her eyes darted to mine and her lips quivered as she whispered, I want you to stay my husband. You don't need anyone else. I'm still yours. I stood up, my frustration boiling over. That's not how this works, Olivia. You can't have it both ways. You can't expect me to wait around while you're off with whoever you want, and then come back like none of it ever happened. That's not love, and it's certainly not a marriage. She flinched at my words, but she didn't back down. I know it sounds crazy, but I need to do this for me. I don't want to hurt you, Brian, but this is something I have to explore before I settle down and have kids. Then you need to leave, I said, walking toward the door. Pack your things and figure out where you're going. You can't stay here while you're doing this. For a moment, she sat there in stunned silence, the weight of my words sinking in. Slowly, she nodded, standing up. I'll pack some things and stay with Jessica for now. As she walked past me toward the stairs to gather her belongings, I felt a strange pit in my stomach. This wasn't how it was supposed to go. We were supposed to be happy, building a life together, not tearing it apart for her so-called self-discovery. Later that evening, after Olivia had packed a few bags, she stood by the front door, hesitating. Are you sure about this? She asked, her voice softer now, almost vulnerable. Can't we just talk about it more? I looked at her, the woman I had once loved deeply, but now, all I felt was a hollow sadness. There's nothing left to talk about, Olivia. You've made your choice. Without another word, she turned and walked out the door. I watched as she drove away, the taillights disappearing into the night, leaving me standing in the doorway of a house that no longer felt like home. The next few days were a blur. I buried myself in work, trying to distract my mind from the emptiness in the house. Each room felt cold and lifeless without her presence. At night, I lay in bed, staring at the ceiling, trying to make sense of everything. The life I had built with Olivia had unraveled so quickly, and I found myself grasping at the frayed edges of it. But I refused to wallow in self-pity. I needed to move forward. A week later, I decided to return to cycling, a hobby I had loved but had set aside when work became too consuming. I joined a local cycling group that met at Pine Ridge Trails, a scenic just outside of Phoenix, popular among the city's cycling enthusiasts. It was a welcome escape, 
and I quickly fell back into the rhythm of the rides, the long miles helping to clear my head. That's where I met Sarah, a nurse at a nearby children's hospital. She was new to the group, and we struck up a conversation during one of the rides. Sarah had a warm, easygoing nature, and as we rode together more frequently, we connected over shared stories. She had recently gone through her own difficult breakup, and we bonded over our mutual struggles. Soon, Sarah and I started meeting up for rides outside of the group. There was something refreshingly simple about being around her. She had a bright, contagious laugh that made our rides feel less heavy, and it wasn't long before we found ourselves at the hideaway, a cozy little bar on the quieter side of town, sharing drinks after a particularly long ride. Over beers and appetizers, we talked about everything, her work with children at the hospital, the emotional toll it sometimes took on her, and how she coped with the ups and downs. I opened up about Olivia, though I kept the details vague. I didn't want to delve too deep into the mess of my failed marriage, but Sarah's understanding made it easier to share bits and pieces. At one point, she placed her hand on mine. You don't have to explain everything right now, Brian, she said, her voice soft and reassuring. I get it. Some things just take time. Her touch caught me off guard. It wasn't just the comfort, it was the fact that I hadn't felt this kind of connection in so long. As the night wore on, I walked her to her car, and before she got in, she kissed me. It wasn't rushed or desperate, it was gentle, filled with the kind of warmth I had been missing. That night, I went home, my mind conflicted. Could I really move on from Olivia this quickly? Was it too soon? But there was no denying the spark I felt with Sarah. The following weeks were filled with more rides, more dinners, and longer conversations that flowed naturally. One Saturday, Sarah suggested we try something different, kayaking at Blue Mesa Lake, just outside of Phoenix. It was something I hadn't done in years, and Sarah, though a novice, was eager to give it a go. We spent the afternoon paddling around the calm waters, laughing as she struggled to maintain her balance in the kayak. It felt so different from the strained, tense moments I had experienced with Olivia recently. With Sarah, there was no pressure, no expectations, just two people enjoying each other's company. As the sun began to set, we pulled the kayaks ashore and sat by the water, sharing a small picnic basket Sarah had brought. The sky turned shades of orange and pink as the day faded into twilight, and she rested her head on my shoulder. For the first time in months, I felt a sense of peace washing over me, something I hadn't experienced since everything with Olivia had begun to unravel. But as serene as the moment was, my mind couldn't help but drift back to Olivia. It wasn't just about her anymore, it was about the life I had built and the one I was now leaving behind. Could I really move on without looking back? Could I allow myself to trust someone else after all that had happened? Meanwhile, Olivia had been eerily silent. No calls, no texts. A part of me wondered if she was waiting for me to break the silence, but I refused to be the one to reach out. She had made her decision, and now she would have to live with it. Then, about a month after she had left, Olivia showed up at the house unexpectedly. I hadn't changed the locks yet, so her key still worked. I was in the kitchen when I heard the door creak open, and there she was, standing in the doorway with an unreadable expression on her face. Brian, can we talk, she asked, her voice tentative, almost unsure. I leaned against the kitchen counter, crossing my arms. What is there to talk about, Olivia? You left. You got what you wanted. She stepped inside, closing the door gently behind her. I didn't want to leave, Brian. I thought we could make it work. Make what work? I asked with a scoff. You wanted to date other men. That's not something you just come back from like it's no big deal. I know, she said, her voice wavering. I was wrong. I didn't realize how much it would hurt. I've missed you, Brian. I want to come back. Her words hung in the air. I had imagined this moment a dozen times, her trying to return, and me finally getting the chance to say what had been building up inside me. But now that she was here, I realized something had changed. The man who had been devastated by her request wasn't standing in front of her anymore. You can't just walk back in like nothing happened, I said, my voice cold. You made your choice, Olivia. You wanted to see other people, and now I'm not interested in going back to that. Her face crumpled as tears welled in her eyes. Is there someone else? I hesitated for a moment, but there was no point in lying. Yes, there is. 
The words hit her like a physical blow. She turned away, wiping her eyes with the back of her hand. I thought you'd wait for me, she whispered. And I thought you'd stay faithful to me, I replied, my tone firm. But we both know how that turned out. Olivia stood there for a moment, struggling to find the right words. She glanced back at me, her expression a mixture of regret and disbelief. I never wanted to lose you, Brian. I thought we could get through anything. We could have, I replied, my voice soft but resolute. But you chose a different path, and now here we are. You wanted to explore yourself, and I had to move on. This isn't just about your decision to see other men, it's about trust, Olivia. Once that's broken, it's hard to repair. She wiped another tear from her cheek and nodded slowly, as if finally coming to terms with the reality of what I was saying. I guess I just thought you'd always be there. I was, I said quietly, until you weren't. The silence between us stretched out, heavy with the weight of everything left unsaid. Finally, Olivia spoke again, her voice barely above a whisper. So, what now? I think it's time we both move forward, I said, feeling a strange sense of closure washing over me. I'm filing for divorce. It's for the best. Her face crumpled at the words, and she nodded again, understanding that this was truly the end. I never wanted it to come to this, but I understand. She left the house quietly that afternoon, and as the door closed behind her, I felt a mixture of sadness and relief. Our chapter had come to a close, and though it wasn't the ending I had envisioned, it was the one that needed to happen. The following weeks were transformative. I filed for divorce, and Olivia didn't contest it. We divided our assets fairly, and I was able to keep the house. Olivia, I later learned through mutual friends, had moved in with Jessica for a while before eventually renting a small apartment of her own. It seemed she was starting her new life, just as I was. Meanwhile, things with Sarah grew deeper. We spent more time together, cycling, kayaking, and simply enjoying each other's company. Being with her was like a breath of fresh air. There was no heavy baggage from the past weighing us down, no unresolved issues, just two people who genuinely enjoyed being together. One evening, after a particularly long bike ride, we sat on the porch of her apartment, sipping cold beers as the sun set over the city. The conversation flowed easily, as it always did, but that night, Sarah seemed more thoughtful than usual. She looked at me, her green eyes full of curiosity and a hint of nervousness. Brian, can I ask you something, she said, breaking the comfortable silence between us. Sure, I replied, leaning back in my chair, feeling more at peace than I had in a long time. What's next for you? she asked gently. I mean, after everything with Olivia, are you ready for more? Are you ready for something serious again? The question hung in the air, and for the first time, instead of feeling overwhelmed, I felt ready. I think I am, I said honestly. I've moved on. It wasn't easy, but I know now that I deserve to be happy again. What I had with Olivia wasn't happiness, it was a compromise. What I want now is something real. Sarah smiled softly, reaching for my hand. I think we can build something real together. We sat there, hand in hand, and for the first time in months, I believe that was true. A few months later, after the divorce was finalized, life began to take unexpected yet welcome turns. I received a promotion at work, something I had been striving for but hadn't anticipated so soon. My career was on track, and for the first time in a long time, I felt in control of my life. I decided to buy a new house, not too far from where I had lived before, but it felt like a fresh start, a place where I could build a future that no longer had Olivia at the center of it. More importantly, Sarah and I decided to take the next step in our relationship and move in together. It wasn't rushed, it felt right, the natural progression of where we were headed. One Saturday afternoon, as we were unpacking boxes and arranging furniture in our new home, Sarah paused, giving me a look that was both nervous and excited, something I hadn't seen before. Brian, she said softly, there's something I need to tell you. I set down the box I was holding, immediately curious. What is it? She took a deep breath, her eyes locking onto mine. I'm pregnant. For a moment, the world seemed to stand still. My thoughts raced with a thousand emotions, but above all, I felt joy. Pure, overwhelming joy. Are you serious? I asked, 
my voice full of disbelief and excitement. She nodded, tears welling up in her eyes. Yes. We're going to have a baby. I pulled her into my arms, feeling a happiness I hadn't known in years. This was it, my fresh start, my second chance at life and love. I had found something real with Sarah, something I hadn't realized I needed until now. As we stood there, wrapped in each other's embrace, I realized that my story wasn't one of betrayal and heartache, but of hope and new beginnings. Sarah and I were getting married that summer, and by Christmas, we would be welcoming our child into the world. Sometimes life takes you through storms you never thought you'd survive, but if you keep moving forward, you might just find something better waiting for you on the other side. This is the end of the story. Friends, share your opinion and thoughts in the comments. Subscribe to Secret Stories so you never miss our exciting stories. It will help us a lot in our development. We release new stories daily. Bye-bye.